Hi, so hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to talk about vintage looks and how to create a vintage wardrobe or vintage timeless look without having to break the bank um, because your girl doesn't have the funds for buying true vintage all the time or I don't know, <laughs> just having the funds to actually replicate something from the past, uh, it can be really pricey. So I think that trying to find hacks and ways to um, get things on the cheap and to fake it till you make it and make it look like you're spending a lot of money but you're not, I think is pretty essential since there honestly is no limit to how much you can spend um, when you go down the vintage rabbit hole. With that said, um, welcome. And as you can see, I kind of have a vintage look today on my face. Uh, I cut my bangs recently, <laughs> uh, kind of a micro fringe, attempting to do somewhat of a Betty bang. I'm not sure if it was that successful to be completely, to be completely honest, but I like it and that's what matters. Uh, and then my hair is just extremely long and it was curly yesterday, but it is now since gone flat. So that is what I'm dealing with. And then my outfit that I have on today, I will probably show you uh, right now, enter a clip for me just walking around in my jumpsuit so you can see what it looks like, but this is a Big Bud Press jumpsuit. Um, I absolutely love their jumpsuits. I have a couple of them. And I think it's a really good way to showcase somewhat of a vintage vibe, like maybe a 70s or like even a 60s kind of look um, that's pretty timeless in my opinion. Uh, with just one outfit, you just put it on and it already looks really interesting. Um, they come in a bunch of different patterns and, uh, and also solid colors. So this right here, this is an extra, extra small in their spicy mustard color. Um, and yeah, like I said, absolutely love their business and I love all the different kinds of jumpsuits that they have. They are a small business. So, and their jumpsuits, specifically their patterns are really sought after. So you kind of have to keep tabs of them on Instagram because they end up selling out really quickly of their prints specifically, I find. So yeah, uh, specifically with their jumpsuits also, I would say that they do tend to run on the pretty pricey side. So I usually find that going on Depop or Poshmark or even the Facebook Big Bud Appreciation page is really helpful in that regard because you can actually find a jumpsuit for a fraction of the price, um, but you are paying for quality. So I think it's an investment and um, they usually like occasionally will have sales and things like that. Uh, let me know if you'd like a video um, specifically about my Big Bud Press clothing because I have quite a lot. Um, and I just, like I said, I really love the jumpsuits. Um, it kind of teeters on that line of like girly with like, I don't know, badass sort of combo. Love it. Um, okay. So, um, can you tell that I do not make YouTube videos and I have no idea what to do with myself? Um, yeah, I just thought I'd put that out there. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things I find can really transform your look, even if you don't have like a lot of different vintage clothes. Um, I'd say number one is concentrating on your hair and your makeup. So maybe two things. Um, those two things, I find that honestly, it doesn't matter what you wear. If you really put a lot of effort into how your hair looks and your makeup, then it gives that vintage look. So doing um, victory rolls, pin curls, curling your hair, Betty bangs, bumper bangs, um, things like that. Uh, will really give that idea of a vintage look. And just with a couple of staples, clothing-wise, it can look like 
vintage. Also vintage, I wanna like point out, is a very, very broad term. So it can really mean a lot of different things. It depends on what era you're going for, I suppose. But I'd say like, I guess what I'm talking about is maybe like 50s to like the 70s. Um, yeah, potentially 40s, yeah. <laughs> Then the next thing I would say are accessories. Those are the cheapest kind of point of entry um, with what you probably already have. So Amazon is actually a really good place to find some accessories for really cheap, just reproduction type stuff. And also things that are currently trendy that are being sold. For example, these. So I found these on Amazon and um, they were probably I'd say like 10 bucks. I don't know. Very cheap. They work. They're sunglasses and they give off that ridiculously vintage kind of look. Um, I think they're outrageous and I love them. So <laughs> they have lots of different colors. This is their pink. Um, and yeah, so this is one example. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm remembering one more pair of sunglasses. So hold on a second. Okay, so these ones are the ones that I wear honestly every day. <laughs> these ones. I just love how these look. Um, I feel like the other ones are kind of in your face, like glamour Hollywood-esque, and these kind of give that same feel, but in a more Modernized sense? I'm not really sure. And were people in the 50s wearing these? I don't really know, but there's one thing that I think really works. Some kind of glasses, sunglasses, um, on an outing really gives that effect. Then I would say the next thing, scarves. Like, I have yet to really know how to use this. But again, Amazon. I got this on Amazon and it is so soft and I love it. It's got like botanical uh, prints on it. I don't know if you can see these if the camera like focuses on them, but so pretty. I absolutely love this. So yeah, I don't know if you want to put it like underneath your hair. I'm gonna attempt to do this and it's gonna be a huge fail or it's gonna be incredible, one of the two. So yeah, just put hair up see if this works for me it doesn't work for me when I'm attempting to make this like the thing I do I okay <laughs> should I be attempting to do this for the first time on camera probably not this is already failing I think Maybe not. okay so tuck that in whatever the heck that is and yeah so Something like this maybe, you could tuck it underneath or also put it like over all of your hair, like just completely tuck it inside and then put one of these bad boys on. And I feel like this is already a look, you know? And this could go with anything I feel like that you're wearing. I mean, scarves in and of themselves, you can just get tons of different kinds of colored scarves and depending on what your outfit is, put that on and this scarf was really cheap too. I think it was also about maybe the 12 bucks. So there you go. Like this already looks pretty fashion statement-y. I think another thing is I'm wearing red lipstick and it is really contrasted. It has that pop of a color and I think that that helps. Um, I feel like, I think back in the day red was by no means the only color that was used as a lipstick by a lot of women. But I think in a lot of posters and advertisements, it was sort of a pinup look. And I think you can achieve that with red or maybe like a muted color too. Uh, like maybe a nude type color. But I don't know. I just think this looks really cute. So that's one thing. I'm gonna leave this up because honestly it's kind of it's kind of working also <laughs> I my head like this I don't know if this happens to anyone else so please leave a comment below if this happens to you but I need to pin this 
onto my hair. Like there's no way this will stay. Like if I am walking around or doing something, it just slips right off because it's kind of a silky type material. So just use uh, two bobbing pins like next to your ears and then just honestly probably like cover it up. I've watched this from another YouTuber and she said this and I think it's pretty true. A lot of what's so appealing um, about the vintage look is it looks effortless but it actually has a lot of thought into it and it's supposed to look like you're naturally like that which no one is but it kind of gives that effect I think similar to a great artist um, it looks like there aren't you don't really see behind the curtain like all the tricks that they're using to get that final product so I think that just look at yourself like that you are a canvas and you are an artist and trying to almost trick someone into thinking um, that you naturally look like this and I think it's a lot of fun at the end of the day just have fun with it um, that's that's what I say if it's not fun then don't do it so next thing curls my hair is not really curly right now it's wavy just because yesterday I slept with heatless curls or what are they called just curlers I guess um, and I have a couple of things I wanted to show you about in regards to that so my hair is very long it does not hold a heated curl, I guess is what you'd say. Just it, like using like a heating wand, it does not work on my hair. I feel like, one, I have no patience for standing there. I have really long hair. I don't have a lot of it, but it's really long and it takes a really long time. I don't like the idea of using heat on my hair in general. And then it takes long and I feel like I have to use a lot of product and then it gets very, crunchy and because there's just so much weight it just falls out that happens irregardless if you have really long hair like me my hair is very long then that's probably going to be an issue you're going to run into so just a heads up but i saw this from rachel maxi <laughs> um so she uses these she uses a lot of different ones i think she uses the standard kind of like grandma-esque curler and i'll show you that in a moment too but these are called cozy curlers and you pretty much wrap them in your hair like I go like this and just wrap them then you twist and there's this netting material here that I can never get to work and you just wrap it over your whole hair twist it to make it tighter if you'd like and they're made of this foam so it's super duper soft and I find that of all the different curlers there are this is the easiest to sleep on and it comes with eight. I think you might be able to get them either with more or less, but I think this might be the standard. Um, so it comes with eight of these big curlers. It's really fast. Like this is what I do at night. I use like a little bit of foam wrapping lotion on my hair to give it more hold after I take them out in the morning. And this works like a charm. It was the first thing I tried to get curly hair. It's the thing that I go to. Then the next thing I tried to do, because I was like, maybe I want tighter curls. Maybe that will make my hair stand longer, which it did not. And also whoever sleeps in these, including Rachel Maxi and other people, I have to hand it to you. You either have like just the hardest, not hardest heads, but you're just with able to stand a lot of pain because <laughs> these puppies are, so hard to sleep in. I do not know how anyone does it. Let me take one out. It's this little guy. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. So basically, it unsnaps. You wrap your hair in this. You can twist this if you'd like, if your hair is on it, and this too. And then you snap it, and it snaps onto your hair. It gives you really tight, small curls really incredible like once you brush them out um obviously like it's a lot the tighter that you wrap your hair around foam the tighter the curl is going to be um it's just the hard plastic i i can't do it man like i, I don't know how people do it i also i felt like at nighttime i was trying to be super quiet because my husband's like sleeping next to me and I'm like turning my head trying to get into a comfortable position position And I have so many of them that I have to put in my hair because my hair is so long that it's just like click it a clacketing all over my hair 
a no. That's gonna be a no from me. So, Cozy Curlers, highly recommend. Small business. These were $35, I wanna say. Or maybe it was 30 bucks. Somewhere around that price. Um, I think it was completely worth it. They seem really well made and this is what I'm using every day now, so. Then, I have this for when I take my hair out and I want to have a little bit of more hold. It's called Suavecita and it's a pomade that you put on your hair to prevent frizz and to provide more hold. I did use this on my bangs yesterday and I will say just be very careful with how much you use because my hair, my bangs were so stringy and greasy after using this that it was just, it was not a look. It was not a look guys. <laughs> It was really bad. Um, maybe that's where you're after. If so, Suavecita. <laughs> Very stringy hair things look. Okay, so next thing. I use this kind of a brush to style my bangs. In the morning, for my Betty bangs, I will honestly wash them with shampoo in the sink takes me two seconds i just have very like thin hair that gets greasy really quickly see how like thin it is and my bangs if i'm messing with them all day which let's be honest we, we all have if you have betty bangs we all don't have betty bangs that's weird but if you have them you know what i'm saying i feel like all day i'm just like checking and like the phone and mirror like this side is driving me freaking insane um you're always touching it and fidgeting with it, which do not do that because it just puts more oil in your hair and makes them separate and just not as like even. But I use this and I kind of like move my hair this way with a blow dryer um, just because I feel like it makes them straight weirdly, like doing this or doing it that way. Um, and then they just like fall perfectly like center in the front, like after I'm done, if that makes any sense. Maybe I'll have another video specifically showing what I do with my bangs in the morning. Um, and then I use a straightener to kind of give that curled under look, um, so that it just all looks like it's like straight in a line. And this is really helpful for that. So yeah, there's that. And then also when I'm separating my bangs in order to style them, I use a duck clip like this. Um, and sometimes I also like to put these in my hair. I just think it looks really cute and you can use these for pin curls or what have you. So, and also, sorry, I'm like forgetting to mention the prices of these things. Super cheap. Like these, there comes, there comes, there comes. If you'd like to use these, there's 36 of these curlers in here. They're so cheap, so cheap, way cheaper than this. Like, I think these were like eight bucks. Like so cheap on Amazon. You are a tough person if you use these, <laughs> like very tough. So if you wanna go the cheaper route, maybe you're not like a sensitive little flower like me and you can use these, do it. I wish that I could use them and they were fine, but they weren't, which is why I got the Kitsy Curlers. Lastly, makeup. I wanna show you guys makeup. So this can, be very cheap or you can go the more pricey route. It really depends. I try to the best of my ability to use things that aren't tested on animals and yeah, are like in a cheaper-ish price range. Uh, I do not know makeup and when I say this, I genuinely mean it. Like it might look like that because I'm wearing like red, red lipstick. Um, maybe it doesn't. Maybe some people are watching this like, dude, what are you doing? I don't know, whatever. But Point being, I <laughs> use Glossier day to day, and then I use a couple of things to kind of make it look like I know what I'm doing with my makeup. So, a lot of, like I said, the stuff that I have is Glossier. And I'd say that maybe when it comes to makeup, Okay, take this with a grain of salt because like I said, I don't really know makeup stuff So I'm kind of talking out of my ass a little bit. I think it's maybe medium price range for Glossier stuff It's kind of pricey to me, but it lasts a really really long time. So that's what I use I also in general if I'm not like trying to have like kind of a full face makeup I like to use these products day-to-day -day because 
they just accentuate your natural beauty. They don't really hide anything. So if you're looking potentially for like full coverage kind of makeup, this is not going to be for you. Um, I've never used full coverage. I just, I don't, I feel like I have very sensitive skin and I don't like the feeling of having a lot of foundation on or cream and stuff. It just, it makes my skin more oily and prone to acne and I don't like the feeling. I just don't like it. So, okay, with that long intro, here we go. So the first thing, yeah. the first thing <laughs> um, that I put on is this Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. Yes, I just read that off the back of the bottle. Uh, it's very used, like worn. This thing lasts forever. I feel like I still have half a bottle left. Uh, be very careful using this because it does stain. I think that might just be the case for most uh, foundations, but that is definitely the case for this. So there's your warning. But I don't remember, oh, okay, it says it here. This is in G8, so do that what you will. But basically they're just different shades of colors and they uh, have them on their website just, and then they have different models to show you like what might be the closest to your skin color. My skin is very yellow, undertony. Like I have olive skin tone is what I would describe. Um, so sometimes it's really tricky to find something that works, but this is perfect. Like I've never used any kind of foundation before ever. Like maybe one time when I was in eighth grade and I was going to a dance and my mom, who is like paper porcelain white used her foundation on me and that's kind of how I knew I didn't like it because it just like was so sticky and like powdery and thick and also did not match my skin tone. So I have never used it since. And then I was, I found this on the Glossier website and I had already been using a couple of their products and I was like, I'm gonna try doing it again. And this is amazing. It feels like a moisturizing, moist, moisturizing, moisturizing cream on your face. And my face likes it. It doesn't make me more acne prone. It, it just feels light and it feels refreshing on my face. And it gives you like a tiny bit of like redness control. So love that for me. The next thing I'll use on my face is this. So this is their cloud paint. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It is in the color Storm. I have a couple of other ones. This is the first one I ever got and it's honestly just the one that I like to use. When I say use a small amount of this, I truly mean it. Like this thing is still mostly full and I've had it for freaking two years. Um, no, I don't know when I'm supposed to throw it out. But it's so these things, like, they come pretty expensive, or when you're looking on the website and you look at the price, like, at face value, you're like, shit, this is kind of maybe pricey for me, for, I've never, like, done this before, especially, like I said, for me, not really a makeup person. I don't remember how much this was, but it was probably, like, 20 to 30 bucks, maybe? I don't know. I might be completely wrong. So it lasts forever, like, forever and ever and ever. So. Maybe not forever and ever, but you see my point. Like, when I say small amount, I mean like hardly press on it, dab it, and put it on both cheeks. It is strong. Like, it really tints your cheeks super quickly. It's really creamy, and I just, I love it. So, next thing. Their Glossier Halo Scope. It's just really glittery, and I like adding that kind of extra, like, tint of like cute little, um, glow so like that don't remember what they have different versions of this this one just looks like that in the center if that helps you then i have their boy brow in brown this i love it runs out so fast like this is my second time buying it and i think it was maybe like eight bucks or not why i literally have my phone here I could be looking this up online, but that's how lazy I am. So, I don't know, eight to 12 bucks, potentially, but it runs out so fast. I feel like they put this much in here. This is my one complaint. And then their mascara, their lash 
Lash Slick. I had been using like just honestly CVS or drugstore like mascara and ooh, my door closed. It's like a ghost. Oh, that was so scary. <laughs> okay, continuing. I've been using drugstore mascara and I don't know, I like this. It's nice. It's kind of curved like a tiny bit. I don't know, I like it. That's it for Glossier. Like that's all I use. Uh, I do have powder from them and stuff like that, but I just, I don't like how it feels on my skin. So I use those products. There's this many, this is what I use most days. And like I said, um, maybe in another video, I'll show you like my makeup look um, from before and after, but it, it doesn't, it just accentuates what you have, like I said. It's not like a crazy before after sort of situation. Then the last thing I use are these things, which I got on Amazon. Uh, I was just doing research on a good liquid eyeliner and a good red lipstick. I have never really worn lipstick before in my life other than like Burt's Bees like tinted stuff because I hate, hate, hate a dry, like flaky feeling lipstick. I feel like the ones with like the really satisfying twist and like the stereotypical like lipstick, those are never moisturizing. They dry out my lips and it feels horrible. So I was on the search for something that would not do that and would provide like a good hold and just look good, I guess. So this is Maybelline's Super Stay Matte Ink. Let's see here. Yeah, so, and it gives this look. And I love it, it's liquid. Ugh. This, got a little brush. It does stain, so you have to be pretty accurate with how you put it on, which took a little bit of trial and error on my part, but yeah, I love this. I love it. It's not drying, like, and I really like that, and it doesn't rub off. Like, the other one I was using, I got, again, like, at a drugstore, and when I put it on, literally, if I just went like this, it would just get everywhere. There's that. Then the last thing that I use is this Maybelline New York, Hyper easy brush tip liner. <laughs> it's just a liquid eyeliner. I did research on Reddit for like all of these things. I don't know if that's kind of like focusing, but yeah. So that's the last thing I use, and it's taken me a while to get them in any way sort of matching. They are sisters, not twins. So yes, and that's literally it. That does did seem like a lot. This has been a really long video already, but um, I just wanted to share with you that you don't need that many things. Like the makeup stuff, yeah, it might be a lot up front, but these were not expensive at all. Like they were very cheap. And because I just got them off Amazon, it's like Maybelline and like, I'm pretty sure you could probably get both of these things at a drugstore, honestly. Um, and then Glossier products. So this is all I use. I don't use anything else. Probably never going to. I just, I don't like to put on a lot of makeup. I don't like the look of just being super duper transformed. I just like it to kind of have a pop of color. And just with these two things alone, it makes your look uh, very accentuated, I guess. And these things just give you some form of like a tiny bit of coverage and kind of give you like a little bit of a glow. That's all. Um, let me know if you have any questions uh, or have like another video you'd like me to make. Like I said, I have vintage clothes um, that I've gotten over time, reproduction type stuff, big bud press and different accessories to help form a vintage look at a cheaper price because that is what we are looking for. So yeah, thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye guys.